Hello, and we're back on Global Voices at Heart Reading TV at the HRS 2023. Conduction system pacing is the new era, and apical ventricular simulation is behind on the past. And to talk everything about conduction system pacing and how to do it, I join by Dr. Margarida Pujo from Barcelona, Spain. Thank you Welcome. so much for the invitation, Juan. It's so great to have you here. It's so Thank great you. to have you here. Well, let's get into it. Tell me what would be the difference in a single spot stimulation or multi-site spot, multi-site stimulation. What do you see in the level 80 trial? It's an interesting uh, question. In the level 8 uh, trial, we don't use uh, multi-point pacing because um, you have uh, been uh, studying this in a previous study in the past before the level 8 trial. Okay. And we um, implanted in the biventricular uh, pacing uh, site only quadripolar leads, but, but we only optimize the device with fusion-optimized intervals. Okay. Then uh, we don't use uh, multipoint, because in that previous study, we have seen that uh, if we compare a multipoint with uh, fusion-optimized intervals, we prolong the AV interval to get the more narrow QRS, mm -hmm. then we obtain uh, a narrower QRS with FOI and not with multipoint. And the other point is that with multipoint, we need more um, uh, more we have less uh, time of uh, battery okay. and we have to change the device earlier. Then so we only program uh, FOI. So that compromise of the battery is a good stuff that you have to consider to change the way you do the stimulation. Good. And how is the workflow to achieve or to get better results with conduction system pacing? Um, we have uh, now a paper that will be published in, in Europase uh, talking about a uh, new stepwise approach because what the previous work that have been uh, done is um, obtaining the left van der Rand spacing capture. But in our lab, we are not um, doing um, catheterization of the left septum mm -hmm. because of the risk. And then we are, going, we are uh, doing another approach. We are uh, uh, putting a best of electrocardiographic yeah. uh, imaging, and we see if there is a change in the pattern of activation, mm -hmm. and we um, uh, see if there is a um, change of the activation, and we have a correction of the left under range block, then we can see say that we are um, capturing the left um, bundle branch, okay. and we implanted the, the lead uh, there. We have to, we have um, established um, um, two criteria. If the first, um, we have a pattern of a right bundle range uh, block or a plus uh, QRS, that it's mm -hmm. a QRS of less than 120 milliseconds, then we implant the lead there. And if we don't have this criteria, we only implant the, the lead there if we have uh, a spike earlier less than 80 milliseconds okay. on, or if we have cap, uh, selective capture. But before having this one or the other criteria, we have to be in the septum in oblique projection, yeah. left oblique projection, and we have to uh, have a W pattern in B1 uh, before screwing. Okay. And tell me about the work you presented today, about the electrogram, high definition, how is it? I love uh, this topic. Um, we are using electrocardiographic imaging in our lab, but in other labs in Prague, for example, they uh, are using ultra high frequency ECG. Yeah. There are both electrocardiographic uh, techniques, and with electrocardiographic imaging, we obtain um, the, the pattern of activation of the ventricle with a vest. Mm -hmm. uh, in our lab, we are working with a vest that uh, don't, no longer needs um, a CT, mm -hmm. and it's very quick to do the, the maps. And with ultra high frequency CG, we obtain with only 12, the normal 12 leads and two more leads, B7 and B8 we obtain a, a map of uh, despolarization, and we can see if we have left bundle branch block or right bundle, yeah. depending on the, the synchrony index calculated be, um, between the fir first point of activation and the last point of activation. And it's very quick. We screw in the, into the sub, mm -hmm. and then we see the change of, of activation with ultra high frequency CG or with the electrocardiographic imaging. So it's guided by the electrogram. That's great. That's great to know. I confess, I learned about the septal flash with you. Mm -hmm. And how this is solved, the, the, how, how the septal flash is solved by the left bundle branch pacing area? Mm -hmm. um, we have studied uh, this 
years ago with uh, CRT, and we have seen that the pattern of septal flash, that it's the, the echocardiographic pattern of left bundle branch block. We see a movement in the in the septum because of the electrical um, problem, electrical yeah. uh, delay. Okay. And with uh, left bundle branch pacing, we have studied it in the level at AT trial, and we have uh, seen that. Um, in patients with left bundle branch uh, pacing and pacing with biventricular pacing, if we follow the patient's 12 months, mm -hmm. the correction of the uh, septal flash is the same in both types of uh, stimulation. That's very interesting, and we need to look for it in your work you presented in the HRS 2023. Thank you so much. It was great having you here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And I want to see you again in Global Voices. Well, this is... Uh, a great experience, HRS 2023 gets better and better, and I hope you are enjoying the meeting and enjoying the Global Voices program. See you in the next episodes. Thank you for watching.